I was extremely proud uh, of our staff and our players for the win. And uh, it's just fun to be a part of a group that finds so many different ways uh, to overcome wow. adversity and, and find ways to win the game. And winning is hard, you know. I mean, it's something that uh, it's always one or two or three plays in a game um, that can swing it, you know. And having a team with the chemistry that we have uh, that doesn't matter who's out there, whether it's a special teams play, uh, an offensive play, a defensive play, they find a way to get an edge and, and swing the momentum our way. And it's just fun to be a part of a group that has that type of connection and chemistry and resiliency. Um, obviously, have tremendous respect uh, for Hugh Freeze and his staff and their football team. It's a very good team. Uh, he's done a great job. Uh, I thought they had a tremendous game plan that they executed on defense. Um, but for us to get our second top 25 win um, against, you know, the odds that we've faced uh, injury-wise and the, some of the things that we've been through, I think it says a lot about this group. And, uh, you know, from a positive standpoint on offense, uh, we won the time of possession. Uh, we were very efficient, averaging five yards of carry in the run game. Uh, I thought our backs were physical and had a lot of yards after contact. Both backs had over 40 yards after contact. Um, we only had one turnover um, in the game on offense, and, and I thought our offensive line did a lot of physical things. You know, uh, the problem was, was we beat ourselves in that game offensively a lot and had nine penalties, which is inexcusable. Um, and it killed our ability to sustain drives and have manageable third down opportunities. And uh, there's a variety of things, you know. Um, there were times when Bailey, you know, we were playing fast and he didn't make sure the receivers were set. So we had two penalties like that. We had uh, a critical false start on the offensive line on a third and two, which we could have got a first down and maybe not even given them the ball back at the end of the game several holding penalties and sometimes those are going to happen you know on the line of scrimmage a lot of that stuff uh, happens every play and doesn't get called but the things that we can control uh, the pre-snap type things we have to eliminate uh, and then you know the the post-snap penalties we had three at receiver uh, where guys just lost their cool and um, we got to get rid of those plays. Those are things we got to do better. And if we do, then we're scoring points and that game's uh, a lot easier to win. You know, we were poor on third down and that was again because of the number of third longs that we put ourselves in. Uh, only 50% in the red zone. We had a missed field goal down there. Um, one that I know Chris will rebound from. You know, on defense, it was a great performance. Um, it was a powerful offense that had scored a lot of points on everyone they played. They were averaging they were the 12th best rushing offense in the country. We held them to the 2.8 yards of carry. Uh, the three takeaways against the quarterback that had only thrown one interception to get three interceptions. I thought uh, Jakeen's play, uh, Aiden's play, and Isaac Duffy Webb's play were all great plays by our guys. Uh, they weren't poorly thrown balls. Um, those were good plays by our players. You know, the fourth down red zone stop, which took points off the board, uh, turned out to be a huge stop for us on defense in that game. Uh, and the blocked field goal by Levi to win it. Um, you know, I think we frustrated and contained a very agile and, and talented quarterback. And our D-line deserves a lot of credit. You know, I thought Aleem played his best game um, in that football game. Uh, Daniel Joseph probably played his best game. He was very physical. Uh, Savion Jackson was very physical. He made a huge stop. The last third down before the field goal block it was a huge play by him. Um, CJ Clark uh, and Terrell Dawkins and Val Martin all played really hard and physical. So it was a great job by our front when we asked them to, to really uh, power rush and, and try to keep him in the pocket. And except for two or three plays, we were able to do that. Uh, I thought all three of our linebackers affected the game. Really, all four of them affected the game in different ways. You know, Isaiah was the most productive he's been uh, in a game. Peyton, uh, I thought, fit the run really well, played hard. Drake was very physical uh, on the edge. Levi came in and, and did some things in pass rush uh, to affect their quarterback. And uh, 
did some nice things in coverage and then obviously blocked the kick and and forced uh, two average punts by a really good punter uh, with his punt rush. Probably the most improved area was our safety play. You know, I thought Jakeen rebounded um, from a, a game that he did not play well in two weeks ago, um, really improved himself in the deep middle, made a great play on the sideline, breaking up a pass where we were beat at corner and then had the interception. Uh, and Isaac Duffy Webb came in, you know, uh, it was great to have Tanner. And then when we lost Tanner to the targeting call, uh, Isaac came in and played really well. Um, and it was good to have Tanner back. And, and you know, obviously he's got to learn the strike zone. Uh, I thought it, it is a challenging play as a defender when you're hitting a, an offensive player that's going um, from a vertical position to the ground. Because sometimes you leave the ground as they're lowering the strike zone. That's a tough play, but we've got to be better uh, at where we're aiming and how we're hitting with our head for him. Um, obviously, he's a physical player, but he needs to play in a way that keeps him in the game. I thought our nickel play, Tyler Baker Williams, um, had three huge pass breakups in the game, uh, which were big plays, one in the red zone, one at the end of the game when they were an empty. Uh, negatives on defense, you know, the seven penalties that were all penalties due to focus and technique. Um, we had three PIs, and, and all three we hooked them. Uh, the one targeting I've spoke about, and then the three hard count plays where our D-line uh, jumps off sides in the neutral zone. And those are all things we need to correct. Uh, and again, we're just helping them. You know, the one disappointing play in the game, I would say, is, is uh, they ran a bootleg in the red zone. We practiced it every day. We covered it exactly how we wanted to cover it every day, and, and we busted. We had an eye violation and then giving up a touchdown before the half. Um, our special teams were good in the game. We, you know, it was a field position game. It was a defensive game. Uh, we pinned them inside the 20 um, two different times, or inside the 10 two different times. Uh, Bailey had a great punt with our, our fourth down punt. We used him, which resulted in the safety the next play by Isaiah. Um, I thought Trent Gill uh, was great with his um, hang time, direction, and operation time, and Joe Shemko really snapped the ball well. Um, so that we could do that because they did a nice job on one of their pump blocks that was close and our operation time got it off. But um, those units have continued to do good things. We're covering punts well, we're covering kickoffs well, and um, our specialists have done a great job this year. I know Chris will respond. He's a clutch kicker and, and I know how mad he was at himself after that one. Uh, the health of our team is good. Uh, we're in a good place, probably better than we were last week at this time. Um, so came out of the game feeling pretty good about that. And, and you know, again, for the, the fans that came to the game, we appreciate the ones that are screaming and cheering us on. Um, can't thank you enough for the ones that are uh, screaming and being positive and yelling and, and pulling for our guys. Again, they, they uh, work really hard. And so I know we all look forward to a day when uh, the stadium is packed again. But until that time, you know, we have one more home game after this one, which will be our senior night. And uh, would love to get um, the best crowd we can for that game, supporting our kids. Now on to our final road game uh, of the year with Syracuse. And uh, a team that's had a lot of injuries. Um, they play fast tempo offense, uh, very multiple. They made the change to the 3-3-5 on defense and, and are running a lot of blitzes, a lot of movement with their defensive front. They lead the ACC in takeaways with 20 takeaways on defense. And uh, offensively, you know, they've had issues at quarterback with the different injuries and guys in and out. So we're going to have to see who plays for them at that spot. Um, they've played a lot of different guys there. But their receivers are really impressive. Uh, really good speed, number three and number four, number 14. Uh, their tailback, 34, averages five yards a carry. They have three starters back on the O-line. Um, defensively, it's uh, you, know, you watch the film and there's four or five plays a game where they give up an explosive play that really hurts them. And outside of that, they're playing really well. And so we've got to do a good job of handling the disruption and the movement. Um, there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage and, and I really think their corner number two is one of the better corners in the ACC. Um, I think he's a really good football player. He's six foot three, um, doesn't get a lot of balls caught on him, breaks up a lot of passes and the other corners got a lot of action because of that and has done a nice job. Uh, they're playing three safeties that are freshmen and, and 
we're going through that on, on our team as well, you know, so I know how that is and you know, they're going to continue to get better, you know, but it's tough at times when you're playing young guys like that and you see that they're, they're athletic. Um, but we have to do a good job with their front. You know, I think their D linemen are big and, and they're three seniors uh, on their front. So they're experienced players there. And I know Coach Babers will have them playing hard. They're always a tough team uh, when we play them up there. And, and it's a team that will play hard and, and have an edge to them. Questions? Uh, just a reminder to use your raise hand icon when you have a question. Jonas, you want to start us off? Hey, Coach, thank you for taking the time and, uh, and speaking with us. You, you mentioned uh, Tyler Baker-Williams. I, I know in the preseason you talked a lot about uh, cross-training guys. Um, he's played nickel. He's played uh, safety in, in the absence of Tanner. He came there and played running back a little bit last year. Can you just kind of talk about his role the last couple of games and how well he's played, no matter where you guys have asked him to play in the secondary? Yeah, I mean, he's playing uh, at a really high level. Uh, he probably, in our training camp, was one of the most impressive players on our team. And then he, he got contact traced twice. And so we lost him for really 30 days, um, which hurt him, you know. And he came back playing the nickel position. Um, and then we had the variety of injuries that we had. And, and uh, through his absence, Josh Pierre-Lewis um, did some good things for us, you know. So we felt like moving Tyler to free safety while we waited on Tanner to return would allow us to get a better lineup. And, and we did that as you saw in the Florida State game for the entire game. Um, but getting Tanner back has allowed us to move Tyler back into the slot, you know, where he plays the nickel position. And he's a versatile guy. He's worked hard at um, not just building up his, his size to be a 200-pound kid, but he's very athletic. He's smart. He can do a lot. He can set the edge in a run game. He can blitz. He can play man-to-man. -man. He doesn't panic when the ball gets there. And as you see in some of our players where there's some DPIs where we're grabbing guys and we've got them covered, we don't need to do that. So, you know, just has come a long way. And I think we recruited him as an athlete, you know, knew that he was a really good player uh, in high school, didn't know exactly where he would fit. Um, but as he got here and we had him on offense and we obviously had talent in the backfield, we felt like he had a better career and, and an earlier path on the defensive side of the ball. Do you feel like, um, I mean, the last three games are the result of, you know, he had to miss two games. Do you think he's yeah. just kind of coming back around and getting back in shape and getting back in the swing of things? Yeah, I think, you know, obviously 30 days is a lot. I mean, you're going to be rusty and you're not going to be in condition the way you need to be. And so he needed to get back out there and play. And he's getting better each week and he's practicing well. He competes in practice every day. And so all those things are a part of why he's playing the way he is now. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Aaron. Hey, Dave, I'm sure it's fun, a lot more fun to look at what didn't go well and what you can improve after a win <laughs> than a loss. Yeah. Um, but specifically with the offense with Bailey, he had been on such a roll the previous couple games. What did you guys see on film that maybe didn't stand out that night that you said, this is not what was, this was what was not working and what we can tweak for this week? Yeah. Well, I think uh, you got to give Liberty some credit. You know, they did a nice job in coverage. Uh, our primary reads a lot of times were not there. There was times where he was pressured. Um, number 11 did a nice job rushing the passer. Number 10 beat us on some twist stunts. So there were times where it was because of them, not him. Um, and I think some of that got him a little bit um, out of rhythm in the pocket where he wasn't able to do what he was doing in the previous games. Uh, he did some good things scrambling, but uh, there's times where he didn't need to, you know, and he could have let some things maybe progress. So it'll be a good learning opportunity for him, you know. He played against a good defense that, uh, in my opinion, did some good things schematically, and their kids played well. And we didn't respond, obviously, by putting ourselves in third and 15. I mean, we were in a third and extra a lot. <laughs> in that game. And, you know, that's hard for Tim to call plays. It's hard for the quarterback, you know? I mean, you're not going to get a play against the defenses that you practiced playing against when it's third and 15. And there was a lot of that in that game that played into what happened. So we need to do a better job, you know, as coaches, obviously, to get our players to play more focused in those situations. And as players, they got to own that and get it done. 
Um, I think Bailey, you know, will play a lot better. I think our offense is going to be angry this week, to be honest with you. I don't think they played to their ability. Um, they're going to be upset. They're going to practice hard, and I look for them to respond the right way. And to follow up, I think actually you guys had a second and 37 at we one did. point during that game near midfield. Um, is, does it help confidence at all, I guess? I mean, they didn't play the way you want to play offensively, but you still won. You know yeah. what I mean? They still did enough to win. It, it, can there, can confidence come from that? Well, I think that's the fun part about this team. You know, I mean, we've, and I said that to the guys, we still haven't played a game yet where all three phases click the same night or day. Uh, we've had games where we've outscored people in one. We've had games where special teams kind of carried us and, and helped both sides of the ball. We've had games where the defense won it for us, you know, and so, I think there's confidence now in all three phases that they can do those things. And now it's about putting it all together and, and more than anything, eliminating helping the other team. You know, I think that's the one area that we need the most growth in because um, statistically we're getting better in some areas that are very important areas to win games. Turnover margin, you know, is a huge area. Our special teams is in the top three in almost every category. Um, but when you're last in the ACC in penalties, <laughs> you're making it hard, you know. You're helping the other team. And so we don't need to help the other team. And I think that's an area that it's preached, it's talked about. But on game day, we've got to do a better job focusing in those areas and cleaning that up and giving ourselves every opportunity to be the best team we can be. Thanks, Dave. Yep. Uh, Jared Pialco. Dave, there's an inspirational quote, the kind of stuff you see on home decor that sold at Bed Bath & Beyond that goes, he believed he could, so they did. This past Saturday, along with games like Pitt and Wake Forest, your teams made plays at the end that maybe they might not have in previous seasons. Just curious if you're a believer in the, pos uh, the uh, power of positivity, and if you think that has been a difference maker down the stretch at times for this team this year. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, the power of positivity is something we preach here. You know, uh, I'm not a fan of negativity. I'm not a fan of people that bring up problems without solutions. Um, I don't like guys that sit around and complain. Um, I don't like working with people that do that either. You know, I think our job is to try to make um, the environment we work in fun in a competitive environment, you know, and you do that by hiring people that like being around each other, that love working with kids. And we've done that. Uh, our players jobs is it's hard, you know, cause everyone wants to play. And, and so you have to embrace the role of a teammate and until you can play, you need to help the team win. And I think our guys have done a great job of that. And I think the leadership, you know, from me to the coaches, from the coaches to the players and the players to the players, has been really good this year. And um, we went through a lot in January and February. I've talked about it many times to help build chemistry and build connection. And, and we did it through competing and connecting with positivity. So that's something I really believe in. I've seen it uh, work on this football team and it's been fun um, to help instigate the change in that part of our program and, and help these guys really enjoy the process of developing and getting better. Thanks, Dave. You bet. Brad Klein. Hey, Coach. Getting some Syracuse representation in here for you. How are you? Nice to meet you. Thanks for taking the time. Um, I want to ask you about the three-three-five. Obviously, Syracuse is going to be bringing the same uh, base defense as you guys. How does that prepare your offense differently in this game week? Are you more prepared because Hoffman and the guys get a better look and have a better idea of what they're going to say? Yeah, I think uh, all the practices we've had against each other, and we do good on good work every day, definitely helps our offensive line. Um, I, I think going into a game like this, had they not seen all the stuff we've shown them, it'd be a much tougher prep. Um, there are differences in how Syracuse does things and we do things, but the front uh, and how the things get ID'd, uh, the pictures that you can see at quarterback with multiple looks in the back end, uh, those things help the offense for sure in preparation, and I'm sure flip side will be for Syracuse. That, you know, they get to see that stuff in practice, and, and so maybe we're not as difficult a challenge for them as far as the preparation with it being an unknown. Um, so, yeah, I think both teams have a little bit of an advantage 
but it's shared. And just to follow up on on what Syracuse has with that three three five, you mentioned that the explosive play has been trouble for them, but also the run defense has been pretty weak. They have one of the worst run defenses in the conference. So how do you balance that, saying, okay, maybe we should be looking for that big play that they occasionally give up, but also get some reps for Bam and Rookie? Uh, we just got to run our system. You know, I mean, the explosive plays are going to come if you just do what you're supposed to do. Um, you know, for them, uh, there's times where – they're stoning a run play over and over and over, and then it pops for 80, you know, and I think that skews your statistics. Like I said, if there's two or three explosive runs in the game and there's 30 runs total, it's probably going to look like you didn't stop the run all day. Well, you didn't stop it on three plays. And so I think, you know, the explosive piece is a skewing statistic at times when you look at people's statistics overall. Um, there's a lot of guys in the box for them, you know, and so we've got to do a good job of managing the movement and picking up the pressure and breaking tackles that end up being explosive runs. Um, and our receivers have to do a really good job in the perimeter, you know, blocking for each other on screens, blocking for the backs to create that second level uh, opportunity. And then in the pass game as well, you know, and I think their corners are really good. You know, I think those are two guys that are hard to expose a lot of the explosive pass game has been on the inside uh, against them, but you know, you got to be able to block them to get it off. And there's a lot of pressure in the backfield. Thanks a lot, coach. Good luck. Yep. David Thompson. Hey Dave, uh, with Aiden's play uh, last week and, and also his improvement in practice, uh, are, should we expect to see him on the field more in, in the next couple games? Yeah. I mean, I think that's something that uh, Brian will decide. Uh, Coach Mitchell through the week, but he's obviously shown us that game day is not too big for him. And so um, we're going to practice hard this week. The guys that play the best in practice will play the most in the game, and we'll see how Aiden does. You know, again, I think there's a developmental piece that goes with this with, you know, the way that Shy Battle has played. He's been very consistent for us this year. Um, and I think Cecil Powell has gotten better. I mean, I think his two PI calls in the game were plays that a lot of times don't get called, but plays he can prevent also just where his hand placement was on the receiver. Mm -hmm. So he's going to get better from that game. He's still a young player in his second year. Um, and Aiden's going to be good. You know, we just got to be smart about how we rotate those guys. And Syracuse has got some speed. I mean, the best part of their offense, in my opinion, is their skill at wide receiver. I think they've got number three and number four can really run. And, Coach, just to follow up, I'm, I'm kind of curious. It's been such a, a crazy year for everybody, but we're entering Thanksgiving. You know, what are you most thankful for this year? <laughs> um, my family, first of all. You know, um, I got a great family. And what Sarah does through this season and, and my sons and how they're working – Definitely thankful for them and, and uh, what I have at home. Um, from a work standpoint, just the, the chemistry of this team, it's, uh, it's been so fun, uh, as hard as it's been with everything that we've dealt with, to be with these guys. They are really, really neat group. They're very close. They're fun to be around. They care about each other. They care about their coaches. and. It's been a, a, as hard as this year has been, it's been one of the most rewarding years um, with a group of guys. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate the question. Brett. Dave, Saturday's game really had a big game feel to it. There was an edge seemed for both teams, and I'm sure Liberty trying to you know, go for a, a special season had something to do with that. This week's game, you're playing a team in which it's not going to be quite as intense or, you know, they're, they've, they've had a difficult season. How do you maintain that edge and that intensity that you had last week in a game that may set up a little bit differently this week? You know, I think our, our players want to be on a team that they say is a great team. And, and I think it doesn't matter who you play. You need to show up with an edge. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, whether we're playing a team with a winning record or a losing record, it doesn't matter. You know, if you say you want to be elite, then you want to be better than you were the week before. And like I said before, we did a lot of bad stuff in that game. 
You know, there's things we got to fix. There's things we got to do better. And we need to go out there and do that. You know, defensively, can we repeat what we did and be better? Offensively, can we get back to what we were doing and finish drives and score touchdowns? Can we as a football team not have penalties that we can prevent? There's a lot that should keep us on edge. And trust me, I'm going to be all over these guys this week when it comes to that because I see a lot of stuff on film that we can do better. And that's my job is to try to get my team to play to the best of their ability. And in my opinion, we have not done that yet. We've won some games because we play really hard and our kids find a way to win. But we've made a lot of those wins challenging ways to win, you know? And so that's gonna be our focus. It doesn't matter what the other team is or who they are. It's how we play when we get on that field. Thanks a lot, Dave. Good luck this yep. weekend. Appreciate it. Gibby. Yeah, Dave, what will Thanksgiving Day look like for you guys? Uh, practice or is the team getting together? Uh, can you maybe explain what's going on on Thanksgiving Day for you guys? Yeah, we'll practice in the morning. Um, we'll have a, a catered Thanksgiving meal that we'll bring in. We can't, you know, sit in one room and all eat at the same time, unfortunately, due to the, the way we eat with COVID restrictions. But we will have, you know, um, a, a meal that these guys can call a Thanksgiving meal. Um, and then we'll cut them loose for the rest of the day. We'll be done around one o'clock and the kids that are local, you know, that have families they can go home to will. And then we'll be back here 6.30 Friday morning to do our third COVID test um, before we leave for Syracuse. So, you know, that's kind of how it'll go. Some of the guys probably will just go home and sleep, I would guess. Does that kind of worry you a little bit, Dave, that the facts that, that the, the guys will disperse after that? You, you hear Thanksgiving, you know, don't do this, don't, you know, don't. No, I mean, our, our guys are, you know, Knock on wood, and we've been very good um, at keeping this stuff away since the students left campus. So they're around their parents after every game. You know, they see their parents, they go out to dinner with their parents. So not worried about that piece of it um, as much as we're testing these guys and checking their temperature and talking to them. They understand we're kind of at this point in a position of herd immunity, I think, with our team because we've had so many cases and been around each other for so long, but hopefully we can keep it that way. Jameson. Yeah, Dave, um, PFF had you guys with just five missed tackles against Liberty. How important was that going into that game? And is that something you've noticed as an improvement this year? Uh, it depends on the game. You know, I think overall, yes. Uh, it has been improved. Um, and we're not giving up as many explosive plays because of that, you know. But uh, in that game, yes, it was a huge point emphasis in the week. Uh, they had a ton of explosive plays on film. And, and a lot of times those are due to a missed tackle somewhere. And it started with their quarterback, their tailbacks, number three, their receiver, who's a jitterbug, you know. Um, so we worked really hard on that, you know, I think. It's something that the kids last year, when we came back in January, we showed them how bad we were in some areas, you know, and it was something they took to heart. And um, it's a very proud group, you know, they don't want to play certain ways. Obviously, in the UNC game, we missed enough tackles for the year. So, you know, we need to continue to get better in our fundamentals and take that type of stuff off of film. Brad, you have another one? Yeah, if you don't mind, uh, Coach, I want to ask you about the Dome. So, I mean, obviously, a lot of coaches say, man, we have to go play in the Dome. It's the Loud House. It's a big deal. No fans this year, but I still hear through the grapevine that the new and improved Dome is very loud. What are your expectations? Uh, how might that factor into the game, even without fans? You know, I hadn't thought about it. Without fans being there, I didn't really think there'd be much noise, so – haven't really played into that. You know, we will be in our indoor at times just so we're catching punts with the white roof in there and things like that. But uh, I don't expect crowd noise to be an issue when there's nobody in there. Um, but we'll have to call around and see if it's impacting anybody else. It's the, uh, it's the music. Just a the, just the heads up for you. It's the music. They blast it. Okay. Well, our guys like music, so that'll be good. Brett. Yeah, Dave, um, on Saturday, uh, Clemson and Florida State got uh, postponed a couple of hours before kickoff, and Coach Swinney has been pretty vocal about that. And I was just wondering, have you had any close calls this season uh, where you, you went into game day not sure and 
as a coach, how, how do you deal with that reality that you're not sure if a game's going to get played until really the kickoff? Yeah. Um, you know, when we flew to Pitt, we didn't have any close calls, but we don't leave town until our results come back. So that's why we test so early on Friday. Um, so once we get off our walkthrough, we bring the kids in and have lunch and let the guys get rehabbed. And then we'll have a position meeting. And literally, we just hung out until we got the thumbs up because I didn't want to get on a plane and find out in flight that we have a problem, you know. So that's what we've done. It, it does make us sit around here for a while on Fridays um, before we get out of town. And we'll do the same thing this week. You know, we'll sit here until we get the thumbs up to go to Syracuse. Um, to answer the second part of your question, yeah, I mean, it's uh, every day where you might have somebody miss, you know. I mean, if a kid has a runny nose, they hold him out until he passes a test, you know. So this isn't something that all of a sudden on Saturday you're worried. I mean, it's every day that something can happen, and, and it's just kind of our reality. Um, if we were having a run of it on our team, it would probably be a bigger concern. But like I said, um, since September, we've been able to really keep things in-house very clean and, and have no issues. So knock on wood, um, we've been good from that standpoint. Thanks. And Jonas, you want to close this out? Yeah, um, totally random question, Coach. And it has nothing to do with anything I'm reporting or, or writing. Um, has 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 Icky just been killing it on that play in practice? The uh, the throwback on the two point conversion, like running guys over, trucking guys. He's, has he scored on it a lot in practice? That made you guys want to call it in that situation. We've been repping that play for like seven weeks, and uh, catches it every time, runs in uh, for a touchdown. And it's hard for anyone on defense to think about covering your backside offensive tackle on a sprint out. So. It was a play we thought we would get, obviously. It was repped, it was worked. But they did a nice job having a guy sitting out there, you know. Uh, they were double teaming our X receiver on the two-point play. And so when he ran across the field, the inside player took it, which hung their corner backside. And most people don't do that. So again, you gotta give Liberty credit right there. But yeah, it was a play that we thought would work. And Icky's looked very athletic on that play. I was looking forward to him scoring and probably worried about a 15 yard celebration penalty after it. <laughs> how do you, how do you, how do you guys even discover that if he had the best hands on the team, it was the right guy for that, for, was the right lineman for that play? Yeah. Well, we've tried it with a couple different people and uh, he by far had the best ball skills of the group. So it was a pretty easy decision. All right. I think that's everybody. Thanks coach. Thanks everybody. Thanks, All right, y'all have a good one. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks a lot. Happy Thanksgiving.